Hello guys, welcome back to a brand new video today and welcome back to Premier League predictions. A few results, um, you know, basically against the odds for say. Um, a few results, you know, weren't probably going the way they expected. Perhaps a higher team did score as many goals that um, teams were expecting. Um, I know the Sheffield United Liverpool game, Liverpool were lucky to win that one. I'll get down to that as well as I'll get down to the Liverpool fixture. Um, but this video, I want to start off in a slightly different way. So let's go get down to that first. But guys, anyway, you know what I do. So guys, you know what to do. Subscribe for more. Thanks for watching and let's go. So the first thing I want to talk about and... I know I've mentioned VAR um, a lot already this season, and I do not try to mention it, um, you know, as often that I would like to. Um, obviously, if you're, you know, a regular student of mine, you know what I do like about VAR. I do, um, you know, I do like it. Perhaps it's probably because I've seen it in the MLS and it works perfectly. But what gets me about VAR, and I'll get down to the Premier League one in a minute, is that it works in the rest of Europe. It works MLS, I know that's not in Europe, um, Bundesliga, La Liga, Serie A. It works fine. Why can it not work in the Premier League? And this is one question I always ask myself week in, week out. Um, I'll, well, I just want to put this picture up because of it is about VAR. Um, this is from the Arsenal Liverpool game last uh, Arsenal Man United game last night at Old Trafford. Um, what you're seeing is the approach up to the Aubameyang goal, equalised it for Arsenal. Um, the original decision was upside. The linesman put his flag up for whatever reason, and you can tell by the picture there's a couple of things going on in this picture. Um, but you got. You know, the linesman's put his flag up, he's been told not to, unless he's 100% sure. I don't see how we could be 100% sure in that picture. Um, you know, you've got all, all of that going on in this one picture. Um, as I said, the original decision was upside. VAR overruled it, saying it was a goal, because it clearly was onside. Um, I did watch the game. But what gets me is if there's no VAR, which a lot of you want, as what I'm seeing, um, that goal would have been disallowed and Arsenal would have had a perfect goal marked off where it's perfectly onside. That's what I like for VAR. There is a few other situations where I do like it. Um, offside goals, the best way I try and say to myself and people I talk to, if you celebrate a goal, um, now this goes back to no VAR, you know when you score a goal and you put the linesman put his flag up because he's offside, you celebrate, you don't know that that flag's gone up, you, you know, you go, oh, flag's up offside. VAR is exactly the same sort of thing. So this time they do it by technology and we're not 100% sure on whether it was offside until we get the clarification. Um, but it's one of them things. But as I, try, as I do often on this channel, and I'll try and do it as often as possible, put the shoe on the other foot. Let's say, for example, Burnley had that goal last night. Um, you know... If you're a Burnley fan and that flag went up and you got home and watched the highlights on whatever and you saw that goal was perfectly offside, you'll be annoyed. I know you would. Um, but you've got all these things and that's why I like VAR. My question is, it's not the VAR. VAR's a bit of technology, you've heard me explain that before, I ain't going to go through all that, all that again. But I've got to start questioning, and it might only be my mind, and do feel free to disagree and put your comments down below on how you feel about the situation. I've got to start questioning the match officials. I've seen 
and I will go on to my predictions in just one minute. Um, VAR overturned decisions in the MLS. This is what I'm saying. We've got to start questioning the match officials, in my opinion. Um, and I do know for a fact that there's going to be a meeting with the Premier League and all 20 Premier League clubs discussing this VAR. I would love to be in that meeting. But anyway, enough about that. Let's go on with my predictions. So the first game we'll have to kick off with is Brighton versus Tottenham. Um, Brighton lose the 2 0 to Chelsea away from home. Um, first three points for Chelsea. I'll talk about them more when I get down to their future. Disappointing day for Brighton. Brighton, I uh, don't think, turned up. I think Brighton should have at least got a point up at Chelsea. No disrespect to Chelsea. Sheffield Giant got a point. Um, May not beat them away from home. Uh, at Old Trafford, you know, so that that's a really bad result on the Brighton end. Put uh, Tottenham on the other hand, two one winners at home to Southampton. Uh, Hugo Louise muck up, um, but you know they still got the three points. That's all that matters. Um, but as far as this game goes, I'm gonna go for Tottenham, and I'm gonna go for. 2-0 win. My next one is Burnley versus Everton. Burnley 2-2 at Villa. Everton losing 3-1 at home to Manchester City. Manchester City not getting as high goals as they did at home against Watford. Um, but still a bad day for Everton. They've got to really start working on their problems um, you know, over the next few weeks. And after this week, it's the next international break as well. So gives them a couple of weeks to try and sort out whatever they need to sort out um, about the players are not on international duty. Um, I did see what happened in the Everton game with Theo Wilcott. Um, you know, ball hit the back of the head, not to my help. Theo, I hope you get better soon. Um, I know he, he was probably concussed, um, and I know that's probably it, but Theo... Anyway, hopes you see you back in the starting eleven for Everton soon. Um, but as far as this game goes, I'm going to call it a draw, and I'm going to go for a one-all scoreline for that one. The next one is Liverpool versus Leicester. Liverpool one-nil winners away from home against Sheffield United. Leicester. Beating Newcastle at Newcastle at home five 0 What a brilliant day for Leicester City. Newcastle did not turn up. Um, yet again, I think teams like Newcastle and Watford at this present stage, every team's gonna look like going to Newcastle and Watford and getting the uh, the win. Um, you know, as I said, great day for Leicester. Great three points. Uh, Liverpool, on the other hand, 1-0 against Sheffield United. Now, that goal only went in because it went through the keeper's hands. Otherwise, we'd be sitting here talking about a 0-0 Sheffield United-Liverpool result. I mean, yet again, money in this game don't mean nothing. It is one of them things where... A lot of people spend all this money and they're like, oh, we've got this player, that player, that player. Don't mean nothing. I mean, you look at our Sheffield United squad prepared to have Liverpool squad. You look at Norwich prepared to when they beat City. It means nothing. And, you know, I keep on saying it. Um, what I remember, I know I ain't got down to their fits yet. Um, Roy Hutchinson said about... Um, actually, I'll talk about it when I get down to their fits, sure. Um, but as far as this game goes, I'm going to give it back to Liverpool and I'm going to go for a 3 0 win for that one. My next one is Norwich versus Aston Villa. Villa 2 2 at home against Burnley. Norwich losing 2 0 away to Crystal Palace. Now, you know, no real biggies there. I mean, Norwich probably should have won at Palace. Um, in all respects, um, you know, Puki should have probably scored one or two at Palace. How well he's been scoring at the minute. Um, Villa 
yeah, there's no real big surprise. So as far as this game goes, I'm going to give it a draw and I'm going to go for a nil-nil scoreline for that one. My next one is Watford versus Sheffield United. Um, Watford losing 2-0 at away from home to Wolverhampton. They still haven't won a game this season yet. Sheffield United um, losing 1-0 at home to Liverpool. Already spoke about Sheffield United. Sheffield United have got nothing to be downhearted about. Mistake by the keeper. Everyone makes them. Watford on the other hand. Um, I can't. I don't know what to say about Watford. How have they gone from being my dark quarters from last season to this? I mean, you know, your Watford fans and whatever, do feel free to put your comments down below um, how you feel about your club. Obviously, got a new man in charge as well now. Um, as I've said, I probably will give the old Watford manager one more game against Arsenal to see how he would have done. Um, but, you know, if you're a Watford fan, please tell me where you think you're going to finish up. I've only got one place in mind at the minute, but, you know. Um, but as far as this game goes, I'm going to give it to Sheffield United, and I'm going to go for a 2-0 win for that one. My next one is West Ham versus Crystal Palace. Um, West Ham 2-2 away to Bournemouth. Crystal Palace beating Norwich 2-0 at home. Right, just before I get down to this fixture, I was going to mention it a bit earlier. Roy Hutchinson said Christian Benteke will not be in the squad if they have more strikers or, you know, more forwards or whatever. I can't remember the exact words. Roy, what about your academy? Everyone has them. If you don't believe one of your first team players should not be in your squad, then surely you should bring one of your academy boys up. I mean, that's what they're there for. I mean, when I heard it, I was like, right, okay, so you're not happy with Christian Benteke. Fine. Um, but you still want to put him in the squad because you haven't got the forwards to put in. And I remember saying to myself at the time, the academy, you know, you'll have them, why not use your academy boys? Um, but as I said, Palace beating Norwich at home 2-0. Uh, you know, Norwich ain't the e easiest thing to play, so, you know, good three points for Palace. Um, West Ham, on the other hand, 2-2 against Bournemouth. Probably expects a little bit more from West Ham, but as far as this game goes, I'm going to give it to West Ham, considering that at home. And don't forget, they've already beaten Man United at home this season. And the way we're always talking, I'm going to go for a 3-1 West Ham win. My next one is Arsenal versus Bournemouth. Arsenal won all away to Man United. Bournemouth 2-2 at home against West Ham. Um, as I said, already spoke about that offside goal, already shown you the picture. Bournemouth, on the other hand, are going up. No disrespect to Arsenal, and you probably all agree with me, or you don't. Uh, you're all... You're all entitled to your own opinion, which you're entitled to. Arsenal are a real team to beat this season. I mean, I look at Arsenal, and yet again, Man United, I'll talk about them in a bit. Um, I look at Arsenal, and teams are like, Arsenal not as good as they were 20, 20 odd years ago. And I'm old enough to say that, believe it or not. Um, but Bournemouth can... I don't think really going to do an upset, which is why I'm going for a 1 0 Bournemouth win. My next one is Manchester City versus Wolverhampton. Manchester City, 3 1 winners away to Everton. Wolverhampton beating Watford 2 0 at home. I've already spoke about both these games, but I want to. They're on the other end, that's how I do it. Um, Man City, great three points, expecting nothing less. Um, especially after Liverpool winning the early game, they had to do it to keep up the pressure. Um, Wolverhampton, first win of the Premier League campaign. Um, you know, it just took a time. I still don't believe Wolverhampton done enough in that transfer window. Now, I look at Watford. 
prepare to last season for what he stated that. If if at the minute way what for the playing they are down with the bottom three and the league table states that I think everyone's gonna to go to Watford at this present time and go we could beat them, we could beat them, we could beat them. And that's no disrespect to Watford, but that's what I stated earlier. How have they gone from my dark horses from last season to this? Um but only Watford can answer the question, so um but as far as this game goes, I'm gonna give it to Manchester City and I'm gonna go for a four nil Manchester City win. My next one is Southampton versus Chelsea. Chelsea beating Brighton 2 0 at home. Um, Southampton losing 2 1 away to Tottenham. Very close game. Very close after that Jugo Lewis muck up. Um, Southampton, I don't think they deserved the three point or the point. No disrespect to Southampton whatsoever. Chelsea, I think. How do you. I mean, Chelsea. I mean. This is what I'm thinking now. Everyone should be going to Chelsea and really giving them a go. Um, but do I think Chelsea can make it two wins out of two? I'll go no, and I'll go Southampton win 2 1. My last one for this weekend, and it's the big one, or one of the you know, big games, it's had a bit of rivalry in the past, is Newcastle versus Manchester United. Newcastle loses 5 0 away to Leicester. Man United 1 1 at home to Arsenal. Yeah. Um, as I've said, I already stayed on Newcastle. So, Newcastle, another team, no one should be turning up. And no disrespect to Newcastle, but at this present time, going and beating them. Um, unfortunately, roughly the same thing for United. They're not quite that bad, in my opinion. But, and, you know, still got a bit, do a bit of tweaking. But as far as this game goes, I'm going to go for a one all scoreline for that one. But anyway, guys, you know what to do good to love. Big fat fun, hope you enjoy it. Subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. Ciao for now.